currently there is only one supercar manufacturer that's producing a pure non-hybrid naturally aspirated supercar welcome to the lamborghini hurricane technica The Technica was produced from 2022 to 2023, so you can still buy it. That's the key point. You can still buy the Technica, you can still order one. Whereas the Hurricane, the model range was produced from 2014 to current date. Now this is a Lamborghini Hurricane Technica, a 2023 model, and it has 631 brake horsepower and 417 pound-foot of torque. Now it's pretty much the same engine that's brought, brought over from the STO, so it produces the same figures. When you compare it to the Performante, the two Performante was the same 5.2 litre V10 pushing out 631 brake horsepower, but the Performante has a higher torque figure of 442 pound foot of torque. Not quite sure where that extra torque figures come from. If you know, let me know in the comments below, please. of the Technica is 3.2 seconds when compared with the Performante of 2.9. On the face of it, looking at the bare numbers, that seems a lot, but it actually is only 3 tenths of a second, which is almost certainly due to the four-wheel drive system of the Performante and its weight reduction. The Lamborghini produced the Hurricane Technica as a 60th anniversary edition for being a supercar manufacturer. And this particular Hurricane Technica has an external body colour of a Rancho Borealis, this beautiful orange which really fits with the Hurricane very, very well. If we move around to the back of the car, we can see it's got a fixed rear wing. This produces an additional 35% more downforce when compared to the Hurricane Evo two-wheel drive. Also, the rear diffuser section is all aerodynamic, but it's not active aero. It doesn't have the Aerodynamica Lamborghini Ativa system that's configured on the Performante, so it's not active aero. You can see it's got a very big rear diffuser. Looking at the rear exhaust system, you've got the hexagonal design, which is very very much associated with Hurricanes. They very much like their hexagon designs. You can see that in the rear grille as well. Yes, it's two wheel drive. It's rear wheel drive only, unlike the Performante that's four wheel drive, but this also uses rear wheel steering. Now below 60 kilometers per hour, these rear wheels move in the opposite direction to the front wheels. Above 60 kilometers per hour, they move in the same direction as the front wheels. Now, what does that do? Well, that reduces the wheelbase of the car, which aids maneuverability at lower speeds, and it increases the wheelbase of the car, lengthens the wheelbase of the car over 60 kilometers per hour. For example, when we park the car in this location, when I had to turn the car around to face it this direction, it turned on a flipping coin. It's really maneuverable at low speeds, which is what you want for a supercar. Gone are the days of the old legacy supercars like the Countach and the Diablo, etc., where they were a nightmare to move, heavy steering, and you had to bloody reverse them, do a 20 point turn to be able to get them to turn around. Um, this is really maneuverable. This really advances this car and is a vast improvement over the, over the legacy earlier Hurricanes. You've got these vents which provide additional cooling and additional air intake to the engine, to so that beautiful 5.2 litre V10. You've got also these additional air intakes down the side above the sills which provide cooling for the rear brakes, very much needed in the design. Again, this beautiful Rancho Borealis paintwork, just stunning for the Lamborghini Hurricane Technica. Black hexagonal design again in the wheels. So again, carrying that hexagonal design forward in the Lamborghini. Now, when moving to the front of the car, you can see it's got this Ipsian design in the front, which is carried for forward from the Lamborghini Sian. This Y shape is the 20th character in the Greek, Greek alphabet, and it actually means 400. Now, I don't know what relevance that has to the Hurricane Technica, but I really like this design. It really makes the Technica stand out from the standard Hurricane and from the Performante. So there it is guys, the heart of the Hurricane Technica. 
the naturally aspirated 5.2 litre V10 pushing out 631 brake horsepower and 417 pound foot of torque. In effect, the same engine carried over from the Lamborghini Huracan STO. A lot of people will note that the engine seems to be a bit offset, seems to be positioned a bit to the left. This top bracing is actually centralized. So that X that you can see there, the central part of that X, that is the center of the car. So you can see from the engine, the plenum chambers, you can see that actually shifted a bit to the left. Now that is by design, that's not unintentional, that is by design. They do that to offset the drive shaft. The drive shaft is positioned on the right hand side of the car, therefore it offsets that weight by moving the engine lump slightly to the left, so it's off center. You can see here that the oil reservoir is in polished aluminium, which is a really nice effect. Obviously, you've got the very nice plenum covers, which are just beautiful with a Lamborghini script along the top. And this engine lid, this is very, very light, full carbon fiber. And you've got this clear see-through screen, which is lightened glass, it's very thin glass. That provides you access to see this stunning power plant through the top when looking down at the back of the car. So moving to the interior of the car, you've got a split between leather and Alcantara, which works very well for the interior of the Technica. You've got leather on the door cards and Alcantara on the door handles, which is really nice because it reduces the fact or mitigates the fact of you having a cold door handle. It's nice and warm when you hold the door handle to pull the door closed. With regards to the interior, you've got the dashboard, which is in leather. You've got plastic non-forged carbon on the climate control vents, which I actually prefer. I think this looks a lot better. The dash binnacle is covered in leather. The seats are the comfort seats, which are fully electric. And you have this, you have this leather side bolsters in um, accident with the orange offset stitching, which brings the external bodywork color into the interior again. The center of the seats are in Alcantara, beautiful soft Alcantara, and you have these orange accents again, which bring a bit sort of like a half hexagon shape into the center of the seats. You've got the center stitching of the Lamborghini motif into the headrest, and you've got the, again, piping, orange piping, bringing the external bodywork color into the headrest as well, um, around the headrest size. Look into the center console, you've got split between leather and orange piping around the center console sections with Alcantara down the sides. And the steering wheel is a leather, full leather steering wheel, again bringing the external bodywork color into the interior of the car with orange offset stitching and this 12 o'clock marker on the steering wheel. Again, looks super cool. the video if you really like this format of content please make sure you give a thumbs up if you're not subscribed please thinking about subscribing very important for the channel guys now back to the video instantly the driving position feels really good we've got comfort seats inside the car which allows me to, to position my height very well again as I've detailed previously most of my height is in my legs so I need to make sure that I can get my upper body up high enough to be able to see over the screen I'm not short in the body but a lot of my six foot one height is in my legs so I've got a good driving position. These are comfort seats. The visibility on the dashboard and through the steering wheel is very good. You've got this good section at the top of the steering wheel, this good, good um, cutout in the top of the steering wheel, which gives you good visual access to all the instrument cluster. We're driving in strata mode at the moment. The temperature is one degree outside, so we're just moving into winter. But instantly, sitting in this car, in comparison to the Performante, it's a totally different drive. Now we haven't given it any real driving conditions yet, which we'll be providing in a few minutes. You'll notice that the car sounds quite loud. That's because it's got the valves permanently open on the exhaust. So there is no valve shutdown when you drop the RPM on the car. Getting used now to the to the approach to indicating we're on the steering wheel with the slider button. So I'm getting used to that now from the Performante. Initially it felt 
non-intuitive, but I can see how you could get used to that as long as you're not using the right hand button, which is the wiper button, as long as you're not using that to try and indicate as well, because it's the same slider button, but obviously it's, it's indicated for the wipers, but you know, you don't want to look down on the steering wheel for too long because you're supposed to be focusing on driving. The center console is better laid out than a performante in my opinion. You've got the switch gear on the top of the center console, but you've got this screen in the center section now. It is what it is with these screens. All supercars, all modern cars, including all these all the EVs as well, they have these center screens or these or these screen systems where you control all your internal systems. So for example, the air conditioning system is controlled off this system. Now I think that's a really bad idea. You need to be able to act action, you need to be able to control the air conditioning system very, very easily with slider buttons or with knobs. Having them on an electronic display screen is a bloody poor idea. Number one, safety. You've got to take your eyes down to engage with it, and that's very unsafe to do that, especially driving a flipping 631 brake horsepower supercar. You know, why would you design a car like that? I just don't understand that. It seems bloody crazy, but again, being fair to Lamborghini, all supercars have that nowadays, and all modern cars have it. So it's not just Lamborghini, it's a gripe I have with all car manufacturers. Guys, car manufacturer designers, stop bloody doing it. At some point, there will be serious accidents with people being losing concentration because of them engaging with these screen interfaces, and there will be a change in the future. You mark my words, it will change in the future. Legislation will come in where they'll force manufacturers to change back to button controls because it is bloody dangerous. But anyway, get off the soapbox now. Also, when engaging with the climate control system, it times out. So you press the top screen, you press one of the icons at the top, and it brings up the full display for the air climate control, for, for the internal climate control. And then after a few seconds, if you're not engaging with it, so for example, if you get distracted by actually driving, um, then the screen types out. You've got to then look back down again, press the button again to bring up the whole screen system. And then this, you know, this times out after a while. You've got to look down, see, okay, what does what, and where, and all this sort of thing. Um, and then it'll time out after a few seconds. And then you're back to, you know, again, trying to engage with it again. So it's just not great, guys. It's not great at all. That gripe aside, the internal ergonomics are very nice. You've got lever on the side door cards. You've got lever on the dashboard. It's not a, it's not very highly spec with regards to forged carbon in, on the inside. I don't think that's too bad a thing, to be honest, because personally, I don't like forged carbon. So I actually prefer it. So you've got these normal lever covered it feels like it's lever covered on the climate control vents so i think that's better than having the forged carbon to be honest it's a lot more classic design in here in the cabin and i like it it suits this technique very well with regards to headroom i'm getting flashed here by by lorries and that because they they love the technique especially the color that it is arancio borealis which is uh, in effect orange, but it's a beautiful orange. So it's like the perfect color for a Lamborghini in my opinion. Visibility is good, in effect the same as the Performante. You've got a very um, highly raked front screen, which reduces the, 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 which reduces the envelope of visibility compared to other supercars but it is what it is and um, but you can still see very clearly out the front you've got the fixed wing out the back so that does impede some of your visibility um, but it is what it is it's, it's not quite as bad as the performante um, and you can see the cars behind fine so it's just that you see that rear wing in the in the first third section of the of the screen but again it is what it is now in regards to cup holders there are none in this car you have to, I believe from doing some research, you'd have to spec a cup holder and the cup holder sits in the glove box. And apparently it's a very, very expensive cup holder as well. I'm not too sure on how much it is, uh, but yeah, uh, these things should really be standard. Initial driving impressions are very good. Um, love the smoothness of the gearbox. Very, very good, especially in strider mode. The brakes seem to be a bit grabby. They seem a bit urgent. They're, they're okay when you're driving or they're okay when you're pushing on a bit they seem to be very progressive but more on that later on when we get on to some some better 
roads with some more twisties. But at the moment, when you're driving slowly, the brakes are quite grabby, um, totally against what they're like in, say, a car like the 458, and they're more progressive in cars like the F8. So for the Hurricane, for the Hurricane Technica, definitely more grabby, definitely more grabby than they were in the Performante. This particular car also has lift, very, very, very much needed in these Hurricanes. They're very low and it's very, very much required. So we've used the lift all the time when we're any chance of scraping the underneath, we engage lift and the lift will automatically come down after a certain period of time. So you don't have to switch it out if, um, if you forget to do so. When you go, go over a certain speed, the lift will also automatically drop down. It feels a lot better composed on the road than the Performante. The Performante was very skittish. Now that was mostly to do with the suspension. The suspension, in my opinion, on the Performante, even in Strada mode, was pretty brutal. Yes, it was a very track-focused car, but they've sorted that in the Technica. Clearly, this is a road-focused car, not track-focused but it's a lot better, a lot better composed on the roads. So this is quite a bumpy section of road, and yes, you can feel it, as you can hear it in my voice, you can feel it's quite bumpy, and the suspension is quite hard, but it's not overtly harsh, it's not like the Performante. On the, with the Performante on this section, the car was literally skidding all over the road. It almost felt like the tyres were losing traction with the road. Now on this section, we're just going to switch into Corsa mode. We're going to stop for a bit. We're going to do a pull in Corsa mode. So let's see what this is like. We've got nothing behind us. Let's do a pull from... We're not going to go crazy, guys, but just do a pull in Corsa. <laughs> Technica, it seems to have got it just right. Good turn in. This bloody screen interface, you shouldn't have to change the main setups of the interior through a screen. The rear quarter panel, the rear B pillar from the from the rear B pillar back isn't great visibility. Through the rear screen, through the rear view mirror, you can see quite well, apart from the rear wing, as I've already detailed before, so that's a bit of a negative uh, rear rear with visibility, but again, no different to the Performante. I can't really think much else of any other negatives, to be honest, guys. Yeah, you could argue the point it should have cup holders inside. That should be standard practice. I don't understand why it isn't on the Hurricanes and on the Lamborghinis in general, probably not standard. I realize you have to pay quite a bit 
to have cup holders and they put them in the glove box for some reason so again I don't quite understand why that is so that's definitely a negative can't really think of a really struggling guys to get some negatives on this car it's you know I really like it it's, it's, a, it's a great car so the pros love the way it drives love the suspension setup love the turning on the steering Yes, the steering doesn't have so much feel on it as, you, as you'd like, but it weights up nicely when you push on and it's nice and light when you need it, when you're moving um, slowly around town, etc. when you're parking up. Love how the Lamborghini Hurricane Technica looks. I love the Y-shaped Sion accents at the front. Yes, the pops and crackles are engineered, but they're nowhere near as intrusive as the Performante. So they got it just about right. Much prefer that. And yes, this has got the valves permanently open so you can hear the exhaust all the time, but because it's not overtly intrusive, it sounds good, it sounds fine. It's the supercar. Obviously Lamborghinis are all about hexagons, so it's got that hexagonal design to the rear tailpipes of the exhaust, which again looks really cool, very, very nice and good how it separates itself away from some of the other Lamborghinis as well. With regards to the actual physical buttons and physical controls, they work very well, very intuitive to use, apart from the window controls. You should pull to drop the window down and push to close the window, in my opinion. I think most people would think that as well, but it's opposite, it's the opposite way around in the Hurricane. It's probably the opposite way around in the Aventadors as well, um, but that should be the opposite way around, but that's just the slight niggle. The key thing is, in my opinion, this is a vast improvement over the cars like the Performante and the earlier Hurricanes. I think they've really nailed it now with the technique and this is a great car. Of course, the main star of the show is the incredible 5.2 litre V10. Effortlessly pulling from low revs with the full 417 pound foot of torque being delivered at 6,500 RPM. The seven speed gearbox working in harmony with the V10 screaming the Technica to its 8,500 red line. <laughs> By far the best sounding hurricane in my opinion, clearly Lamborghini waiting until the end to deliver their best all round supercar. Apart from the Storato, this could be, and probably is, the very last naturally aspirated non-hybrid Lamborghini. So this is quite an important car. And as I detailed earlier, this was designed and developed as the 60th anniversary edition car for Lamborghini. So this is to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Lamborghini. So they've got it right. They had to get it right in my opinion, and in my opinion, they did get it right. Our thanks and appreciation go out to 5-0 Supercars and Watchers of Bar for making it possible for us to review the Ferrari F8, the Lamborghini Performante and the Lamborghini Technica. Very much appreciated.